Baton Rouge cases than that in our police department. He said, I, this really isn't that big of a deal. I looked at that man square in the face and said, who, who is paying you to do this? He got real hot up and he said, by nobody. I said, you're telling me that waste high fires, we just had a blitzkrieg of fires, and you're telling me that this is not a big deal. Our house could have burned down. He said, oh, we get fire reports like this all the time. I said, who's paying you to do this? He said, nobody, ma'am. And then he kind of left in a house. I said, you know what? I told that police officer, I, want to, I'm, I said, I want to study to become an attorney. And I can tell by the way you're behaving, there's something fishy about you. And if I was a lawyer, I'd probably drag you into court. <laughs> and he, didn't, he just kind of laughed after that. I said, I said, who's paying you, officer, to try to frame me with these questions? I said, who, I said you shouldn't treat these fires so flippantly. This could be very serious, officer. <laughs> And he, um, he left after that. He acted real and told He said, nobody's paying me to do this. So I told Brent about that incident. My husband came home, I think, the next day or the day after that. I decided I wouldn't mess with the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department. I could tell that they weren't on my side. They were on the criminal side. My husband came home about two days later. You know what happened? He came in and he said, I just talked to the neighbors. And they told me that they saw Eric set those fires. I said, he did not. So I was with Eric, and Eric did not set those fires. I said, are you going to believe me, or are you going to believe those neighbors? And he said, he said, Eric, he said, I'm going to whip you. He said, I'm going to take you to that room, and I'm going to whip you right now for starting those fires. I put myself between my husband and that child. I said, if you touch, lay one hand on this boy, I'm going to divorce you right now. He said, you will not punish this boy. I said, he didn't do those fires. Now, you better believe me, because I'm telling you the truth. I said, those neighbors are lying. I said, he did not do these fires, and don't you lay a hand on this boy and punish him for something he didn't do. He said, I'm going to punish him. I said, all right, I'm filing for divorce. He said, this marriage is over, and I meant it. I said, I'm going to go in there and start separating my books from yours in the library. I said, we are no longer married. And I said, what are you going to do? How are you going to support yourself? I said, I don't know, maybe I'll get a job as a legal secretary. I'm going to start looking for work in Atlanta. I said, you touch that boy, and I promise you I'm going to divorce you. So I went in the library and started separating our books, and I went on the Internet and started looking for work in Atlanta. A couple of days later, my husband came in real jocative and lighthearted and said, oh, you're not going to divorce me. He said, I know you won't. I said, are you going to punish that boy? He said, oh, we'll just forget about the whole thing. And apparently he and the preacher got together and they decided it would be better to, to overlook punishing my boy than to have the marriage break up. Actually, I don't think the Jesuits wanted the marriage to break up. They decided they pushed me a little too far. So since he didn't punish the boy, I decided I'd stay in the marriage. And we got ready to move to Seattle. Another interesting thing happened to me. Um... I, as a result of the pro medical problems we had in the summer of 98 with allergies, I started seeing Dr. Alan Lieberman. He is a specialist in allergy and environmental medicine in North Charleston. And when I went to see him, he did very extensive allergy testing on me. But we had an interesting incident in his office. Let me see if I can recall it. I remember that I requested that he tested me for formaldehyde, for formaldehyde sensitivity. And I got a really strange reaction from him about that. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what happened. Wait a minute, I think it's coming back to me. I think I remember it now. They, um, they had formaldehyde written on a chart. And... Thank <laughs> you.
Uh, yeah, I think I remember what happened. It was really weird. The nurse put the injection into me. They kind of like did an intradermal injection to see how you'd react to different substances. And when it came time for the formaldehyde testing, I think it was, I can't remember if it was under this tongue, sublingual, or I can't remember which method they used. But I remember she, they always asked you to rate your symptoms like on a scale from one to ten. And they, uh, They told me that one of the tests was formaldehyde. Oh, now I remember. I was sitting next to Dr. Lieberman, and I asked him if he would please test me for formaldehyde because I wanted to know if I had a sensitivity to it. And for some odd reason, he seemed reluctant to do it. And I thought that was kind of strange because it was part of their normal testing procedure. They, they, they had done it with other patients. He was a specialist in environmental medicine. So um, I talked him into it. Because I wanted to be tested for it because I thought I had formaldehyde sensitivity. And I can't remember exactly what it was. But during the testing procedure, they played a dirty trick on me. <laughs> I remember that. I, you know, and I can't remember exactly. Actually, looking back, I think Dr. Lieberman's all right. But I think the Jesuits got him temporarily. And maybe that's where they got my allergy records from, when they had them temporarily. But when I was doing the testing procedure for formaldehyde, the nurse, I think she claimed that she was testing me for formaldehyde, and she asked me what my symptoms were, and I rated it like 7 or 8 or something like that. And then when it was over, she said, she said, I, I, that really wasn't formaldehyde that you got tested for. It was a placebo. We just wanted to eliminate the possibility that maybe you're imagining symptoms with formaldehyde. <laughs> I said, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah, that was it. Before they gave me the official formaldehyde test, they gave me a trick one. But it, was, it was just plain old salt water or something. And I think I rated it as being a six or a seven. And, and when I was done, and, and they lied to me and told me it was formaldehyde. And she said, well, what numbers do you give that? The higher the number, that meant you were having symptoms. And I think I gave it like a six or a seven. And I said, I'm not really sure. I, I'm not. I think it's about a six or a seven. And then after I... Um, I think I remember saying that I wasn't sure what my symptoms were. And then after I, after I said that, she said, that wasn't formaldehyde. That was just plain old salt water. Or plain old, it was nothing. And you, and I looked at her and I said, is this your normal procedure for formaldehyde testing? And she said, oh yes, we do this all the time. I said, that's a little strange. <laughs> I said, I still want formaldehyde testing. I said, I don't care. I said, maybe I did imagine these symptoms. I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. It gets confusing. I still want formaldehyde testing. That's what I told her. But I said, is this your normal procedure for formaldehyde testing? I think it's a little a bizarre practice. I think they tested me for formaldehyde, and they found a sensitivity, but they were kind of reluctant to divulge it. Apparently, it wasn't severe. Looking back, I don't know. You know, I, I do know that in the mobile home in the kitchen, I was getting some pretty severe symptoms, and I think it was formaldehyde. And I think the Jesuits were trying to cover it up. And they got some cooperation from, doc, from Dr. Lieberman. But they, I think eventually Dr. Lieberman got right. That, the Jesuits often do that. They will get somebody, and then they'll lose them. Thank God. So... But it was getting kind of scary to me at this point. I said, this Lori McBride girl, she's just too good. I mean, she got, she was getting, and then another strange thing happened to me. Uh, right after the fires, my psychiatrist called me. His name was Dr. Peter Naylor. He said, I got an email from your husband. And uh, he said, I'd like to see you. He's concerned about you. So what had happened was, after the fires, and I went into...